techniques of differentiation. We're going to start off nice and simple. I want to talk about the derivative of any horizontal line, firstly. I have to start there, and then we'll move on from that. Okay, so what happens if I try to find the slope of a constant? So for instance, uh, slope of a constant, when you graph a constant, what do you get? Do you get a horizontal or a vertical line? Which one? If you graph a constant, y equals 5, what do you get? It's not vertical, right? That would be x equals this horizontal line at whatever your constant happens to be. So that's a constant line. Tell me something. Supposing I've drawn this perfectly, what's the slope of my line there? Zero. Sure, because we know the slope of any horizontal line would be zero, right? So, and the slope of a constant is, in fact, <coughs> it's not rising or falling. All right, cool. Uh, well, wait a second, though. What does derivative stand for? Slope of a curve. In our case, our curve is a horizontal line. It's still considered a curve, even though, ironically, it doesn't curve. <coughs> all right? uh, still, though, if derivative means slope, you believe me that derivative means slope, right? If derivative means slope of a function, and the slope of our function is always zero no matter what, then the derivative of a constant, I've been completely general about this constant. I don't know what it is. It could be negative, positive, whatever. What's the derivative of a constant? Basically, it's asking this question. Don't forget what a derivative means. Derivative means slope. What's the slope of a constant line? Zero. Zero, sure. What's the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. The derivative of any constant is zero, no matter what. That's kind of nice. Do you believe that? Do you buy into what the reasoning why? Horizontal lines have no slope, right? or they have a slope of zero, I should say. They have a slope of zero. Therefore, the derivative of a horizontal line must give you zero. Derivative is slope. Slope of horizontal lines are zero. Uh, constants give you horizontal lines, so the derivative of a constant is zero. That's kind of nice. So in English, this says the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, basic examples just to make sure that you get it. Uh, right, okay, uh, we'll get there in a minute. What's the derivative of... What's the derivative of 3? Three? 3 is a constant. What's the derivative of a constant? No work at all. That's fantastic. I love it. No more limit, right? If you have a constant, the, the derivative is, is just 0. That's, that's easier. What's the derivative of... Derivative of negative 1, everybody. What is that? Zero. No thought at all. Derivative of constant is 0. What's the derivative <coughs> of zero. pi? Zero. Is pi a constant? Yes. Pi is just a number. It is 3.14159 and forever, whatever that is. But it doesn't matter that it doesn't end. It's still a constant number, isn't it? It doesn't change. The derivative of any constant is 0. So this is 0. How many people feel okay with the derivative of a constant is 0? Good. That's kind of nice, right? We, we didn't even have to use limits over there. Unfortunately for us, when we come up with something that does have a variable in it, there was a formula that we were able to use. We knew that the first derivative, or I'll use, just so you get familiar with it, the derivative of f with respect to x, that's what that is, <coughs> was what? What did it start with? The formula to find a derivative. Oh, no. oh, before that. Limit. Limit. Need a limit. Cool. Minus Love it. Okay, that's how you find the derivative. True? We, we practice a lot of time on this. This will, uh, One of the examples we got to do is this one. I want you to see what happens with this, okay? So we're going to work this through right now. I've asked you to find f plus h of... I'm oh, sorry, uh, f of x plus h first, and f of x. Find them independently, then we plug them in and we figure out what this is, 
is going to be, what is f of x plus h? What's that going to give us in this case? Very good. It's just a composition. We're just substituting that in. Have you gotten pretty good at that so far? Yeah. Just don't separate the x plus h, you'll be fine. f of x is just x cubed. So we know our first derivative is going to be limit h goes to 0, x plus h cubed minus x cubed all over h. Still alright so far? What do I do now? Yeah, we, we've gone through this a lot. Now it's basically just algebra. You distribute, you combine some like terms, hopefully you're able to factor an h out, and your whole goal here is to cross h's out. True? That, that's your whole, whole goal. So in our case, we'd be all right. Well, this is limit h goes to 0. We've got x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared minus, I'm sorry, plus h cubed minus x cubed. I did that kind of fast, but you would just distribute that all out. Uh, x plus h times x plus h times <coughs> x plus h. Distribute, combine like terms, and I guarantee that's what you're going to get right there. If you want to learn a quicker way to do that, you come and see me. I'll show you Pascal's triangle and how to do binomial expansion. It's not hard. So far, so good? Does everything except for the h terms cross out? In that case, that's just this one and this one. So we get limit h goes to 0, 3x squared h plus 3x h squared plus h cubed over h. What would I do now to so finish off this problem? Perfect. You're still with me, right? We've done work like this before, just some, some algebra. Cross the h's out. Uh, let the h go to zero because now you've gotten rid of that denominator. And what are you going to get out of this whole beautiful thing? Three x squared. Right? Beautiful. What did I just find? Yeah, sure. This gives the slope of this function, this s-curve, at any point, right? If I had to give you a point like uh, 1, 1, or I give you a point like 2, 8, and you could plug in the 2 or the, the x value, you could evaluate it, find me the actual slope, and find me the equation of the tangent line of that specific point. Could you not? I hope you're like, yes, I can do that right now. That, that's where you should be at this point. Here's the thing. This is going to be from someone who hasn't taken calculus before I want an answer. Do you see, because I know some of you have, and so those of you don't love me that much, but th those of you who have not had calculus before, you're going to love me. You'll love me. Does this suck? Yes. Yeah. This sucks. I want you to think, is there a way that you can go from here to here without garbage? Do you see a pattern? Do you see the pattern on someone who hasn't had the calculus before? Where's this, where's this number go? What happens to this number? So from this to this, all that happened was this number went out into the front, right? And one got taken away from that number. You believe me? Guess what? Works all the time. <laughs> all the time. Do you ever have to do this again? Why do you think I teach you this one before I teach you this one? Because you won't ever do this. Yeah, you don't have to. This is the, the formula for a derivative. What we're going to learn now are shortcuts. This is horrible. Why is there even a formula when you can just do that? Because this is what we're doing. This is the slope, and this is the only way that you can let the, the points, the distance between them go to zero. This is it. This right here is a shortcut that works every time. Uh, that, so what's the actual calculus? This is the actual calculus. That's it. Right? This is the stuff that works. The limit is the fundamental of the, of the calculus. That's how you let it happen. Now, techniques of differentiation says, great, we understand that. What's the way we can put this in practice and actually do the derivatives all the time? This stuff, right? Because here's the thing. Ah. 
You gonna wanna do that? That has to be a 30. You wanna do that? No, no I don't either. Because, <laughs> but the, the thing that's gonna happen is, it's a polynomial, right? It's a very basic polynomial. <coughs> What's gonna happen is if you do binomial expansion, every single term in here, think about this, you can think about it. Every term in here, is going to have an H except for the very first one. True? The very first one is not. And you're subtracting exactly that function from it. So that's going to be gone. Everything else has an H. The very next term will have only a single H. That's binomial expansion. When you factor that H out, it, you'll be only left with this thing. Binomial expansion says how you get this is that goes there and that becomes one less. That's why this works. That is the, the power rule for derivatives. So what's calculus? This is calculus. What's the easy way to do it? That's the easy way to do it. You have to know this, because that's what we're the, what this class is all about, all right? You're finding slopes, and that's how you do it. In practical application, though, you just kind of cheat a little bit. You ready to learn how to cheat? Yes. That's what I love to have this. I love cheating. It's not cheating. Everyone does this. If everyone does it, it makes it OK. That's not true. But it's not really? Really? Yeah, no. So if everybody jumps off the bridge. <laughs> Please do it. We have a shortage of food. I mean, it would be... I'm just kidding. Hey, you two on, on YouTube or where? Don't jump off bridges. That's sarcasm hurts sometimes. You just hope that sarcasm is with you. Okay, if n is any integer, this works. We're going to find it later, and there's no qualifications on n. It can be anything, but for right now, any integer works for us. This is a true statement. The derivative of any x to any power is equal to. Notice ddx stands for derivative. That's how I'm going to be writing most derivatives in here, because it's very nice notationally to, to write it this way. Uh, it's hard to write it with the f prime to, to do this. Um, I, I don't like that. I like this way to say I'm taking the derivative of whatever's in there. Do you understand? It says take the derivative of this. What you get out of that is what happens to the, the well it wasn't a 30 anymore, it was, it was a 3. What happens to the 3? What is a symbol that represents the 3 here? What's the n going to do? You just pull that n out front. The x doesn't change. But what happens to the variable? Sure, you subtract one from it, that's n minus one. Do you love me? I told you you love me. Maybe not, not yet. You're going to. So can you do, we, we've actually done that derivative before, if you remember. We've done it twice. We've done it the long way, both with limits. Can you do that derivative? What's the derivative of x squared? That's what this question asks. Derivative of x, x squared, what do you do? What happens to the 2 again? It fits this format. So 2 goes here, x to the how much? Because you're going to do 2 minus 1. Now I'm rarely going to show you that math. We're just going to assume you can subtract 1 on your own and get 2x to the first power, or just 2x. Hey, that's kind of cool because you've just found the slope of that curve in less than a, two seconds without doing any limits or anything like that, right? So I could ask you this question and now the same exact